Now, I know a lot of you fly tires out there are like me and that one of the most fun things we do is experimenting. So I want to show you an experiment that I did a couple of years ago, and it's worked out pretty well for me. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Savage Flies. My name is Matt, and thank you for stopping by. So the pattern I'm talking about today is, well, I'm calling it the cactus bug, but I got the inspiration from it from Rick Takahashi's The Fly Tying Artist. Now, this is a pretty cool book. I haven't tied a lot out of it, published in 2019, but it's got some pretty cool patterns and instructions, so I might do a review of that here pretty soon. Now, one of the sections of nymphs he has in here, he calls his go-to nymphs. G-O, number two, and then the name of it, like Prince. Go-to Prince, or go-to John. So I was looking at his go-to Prince nymph, which was really a, a standard Prince, but just a little bit easier, simplified a little bit more. So I tied that, and I said, I'm going to simplify it even further. Instead of using a peacock curl, I used a cactus chenille. Now, if you haven't used cactus chenille, it's a pretty neat material. I think you're going to like it. So after I tied his, you know, uh, a variation of his go-to prints, it really didn't even look anything at all like a prince. So I eventually just took the, the goose by a tails off and made it even simpler. And then a few more modifications, and it doesn't look anything at all like a prince. It just looks like a, a synthetic kind of waltz worm type bug. But oddly enough, it did pretty well for me. And then I, I tied it in a few more colors. So I tied it in a green, purple, orange, yellow, blue, all kinds of crazy colors, pretty much anything that's not natural. So about this olive chenille, I, I picked up, uh, I think, 15 little bobbins of it in these really crazy colors for about $8. So it's a, a very economical material. Uh, I got a, a pack of it right here in a, a medium size, and I think there are 24 in here for some very crazy colors. And I'll put links to those in the description if you want to go out and check it out. I'd recommend it because it's a pretty versatile material and you can make some pretty cool looking stuff with it. So this fly today, I have no idea why it's been effective for me. I mean, it's not one of my go-to flies. I don't tie these up a dozen at a time, but I do have half a dozen of them in my nymph box at any given time. And one of my theories on why this might work is if you're fishing on a heavily pressured river that the fish have just seen, you know, a thousand prince nymphs or copper johns. So if you're fishing something that, you know, no other fishermen are using or the fish just haven't seen, I mean, maybe it scares off some of them, but some of them probably say, hey, what's that crazy looking bug? I'm going to go eat it. So that's always one of my tactics, especially later in the season. And this is one of my go-to bugs for doing that. So again, this is a super simple pattern, and I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there you go, in the vise, what I'm calling my little cactus bug. Now I'm tying this on a size 12. It's a curved shank hook, but by all means, you, you can use a straight shank hook, it's just fine. And that's a 2.8 millimeter tungsten bead. The bead is, a, you know, whatever size to match your hook. And you don't necessarily need weighted wraps with a tungsten bead, but I'll put about six or so just to help hold that bead in place. Jam that up in there and then break it off. And I'm using a 70 denier thread. This is black, but one option is use a bright thread if you want to put a hot spot on it. I don't think it's all that necessary because the whole fly is kind of a hot spot. But go ahead and, and smooth out the lump between the, the weight and the, the rest of the hook. Then take your thread to the well around the bend of the hook. Now the fun part and why it's called the cactus bug, just cactus chenille. Pretty cool looking stuff right here. Um, you don't even have to worry about, you know, trimming the, the, the ends like you do on a regular chenille. It's a big buggy looking crazy contraption. So just catch that in right here and then take your thread right on back up right behind the eye. And you'll notice the, the thread core on this is dyed the same color as the the uh, plastic, you know, legs sticking off, the cactus looking things. So use that red, you know, one wrap right in front of the other, just to, to give your underbody the, the color. So there you go, when you get it up to the top, see how we've used that red thread to make our underbody and these crazy synthetics coming off to give us some fake fuzziness and only one more component for this 
I'm using white and trine. You could use some any synthetic yarn if you want. So I'll, I'll just cut a, a piece about like this and I'm gonna fold it over. So as big as you want your wing, make it uh, about half that thick. So there we go right there. Now just fold it back over on itself. Couple of two or three wraps right here to lock this in. And we'll fix that wing in just a second, but let's go ahead and do our whip finish. So you can imagine if this was a, a green or yellow body that the red contrasting thread right behind there would be a, a decent looking hot spot. But what you might want to do, if you need to, probably don't, but just you know, take your brush and, and smooth fluff this out a little bit before you trim it. And then trim it about a body length because it will it will jump back up on you. So I'll go back here to the bend of the hook, cut it right there, and then pop back up. So there you go, simple little cactus nymph. Hard to believe this thing can be as effective as it is, but uh, it sometimes is. So I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.